We're cooking like it's 1943. I got inspired like it's 1999. I haven't done a silly intro in forever. So hey, here we are. Let's try one out. Maybe you guys won't like it. Today I have some more recipes from the 1940s for you. This was the time of World War II. So these are wartime ration recipes. And it's actually a very good Sunday meal I have for you today, as well as a great lunch or dinner idea. And these things are going to be meat replacement type things and using what you have on hand. Because during those ration times, it was mostly meat and sugar and dairy that was rationed. So those things are light. So we have to kind of swap things out and figure out other ways to make delicious meals. And I have to say, I did not feel like I was eating during the wartime ration era when I made these. So I'm excited to share them with you. I am finally making oatmeal meatloaf. People have told me about this before when I have made my stuffing meatloaf and I've always meant to try it. You wanna start with a large lightly beaten egg and add in two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, one teaspoon of salt, a quarter cup of ketchup, and I heard that tomato sauce also works here, or I think tomato soup. Now this is an interesting addition, one third a cup of evaporated milk, and I don't work with evaporated milk much, but I assume that it's something that's nice and shelf stable, so it's easy to keep on hand through you know, any tough time. For oats, we're gonna use three quarters a cup of quick cooking oats, and this is gonna be what really helps to stretch our ground beef in this meatloaf recipe. The recipe calls for a pound and a half of ground beef, but I'm actually just gonna use a pound because that is what I have. And you could use ground turkey here too. I think that is a great option. And I've made meatloaf with ground turkey before and you can barely even tell the difference. It is a great budget choice if you only have a few bucks and you can get some at Walmart for the latest price, I think is $2.20. The meat that I'm using, I actually grabbed on Manager Special. It had like a big bread sticker on it and it was like $1.50 off. So always watch for those things and throw any of those Manager Special right in the freezer. And then you can use that ground beef next time you need to use ground beef in a recipe and you're gonna be all set and you're not, no, not gonna have spent the full price ever. Now, when I made this, I somehow forgot to add a quarter cup of chopped onion and it was still really good. So, hey, if you don't have chopped onion, don't add it. As always, you can use a, a teaspoon of onion powder instead or just don't add it at all and it'll still be delicious because I was surprised afterwards. I'm like, oh no, I forgot the onion. I'm like, this is still great. It's still good as it is. And then you wanna add this to a loaf pan if you have one. And like I said in a recent video, I, for some reason, my loaf pan, it got ruined and then I didn't buy a new one. So I'm just gonna make a little loaf in my nine by nine pan here on some parchment paper. And this works great too. So whatever you have, go ahead and make it work. And you can just shape that right into whatever shape you want. You can even make a heart. You can make like a heart shaped meatloaf because you are loved. You want to bake this uncovered at 350 degrees for about an hour and 15 minutes. So this is a long one. Plan ahead. Make sure that you have enough time because it does really take a while to cook all the way through. Now this recipe, I can't even find the website where I initially found it, but it was like a list of things that people ate in the 40s uh, during wartime and it was super simple. So it's just two cups of canned or fresh corn two cups of tomatoes, it does not specify, so I used canned, but if you have fresh, go ahead. A teaspoon of sugar, a tablespoon of butter, and a teaspoon of salt. And then I just mixed everything together in a pie pan. And then it says one cup of breadcrumbs and it does not specify how you're supposed to do these. So maybe you know better than I do and you've heard of this recipe before. You can comment below and tell me what I did right or wrong. But I just mixed about three quarters of it around within the casserole. And then I topped the rest of it with the, the quarter cup of it. And then I baked this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes just to heat it up and kind of make it into something. And it was quite good. My family loves corn, so we're big fans. And you add a little tomato to that. You add a little bit of breadcrumbs and butter and salt and sugar. And it's, so it's salty, sweet. And there, this was fabulous. It went really well with that meatloaf. You can see how this meatloaf came out now. We serve these two things together with a little bit of rice that you'll see in a later video. And this is an absolutely fabulous 1940s wartime meal. I was totally into it. This was probably like a, if you were going to have this, maybe like a Sunday dinner in the 40s. Uh, and it was, it was really wonderful. These days, you can make a sandwich for lunch, no problem. 
just with some deli meat, but in the 40s during wartime, meat was hard to come by. So many people actually ended up having their own chickens or there was chickens in their neighborhood and they ended up with a lot of eggs and eggs was a great protein option. So a very popular lunch idea was a egg salad sandwich. People were making their own bread for these sandwiches and boiling up their eggs and then making an egg salad sandwich, which is one of my favorite things anyway. So I wanted to share a special 1940s zippy egg sandwich with you guys. And I'm even using my own homemade sourdough bread. For one sandwich, you want to start with three hard-boiled eggs. Yes, it seems like a lot. It's definitely a filling sandwich. It could probably serve two, so you may want to make two sandwiches with this. And you can coarsely chop them before you put them in the bowl, or I just like to put mine in the bowl and then smash them up with a fork, and that's just my preferred method. You want to add in one and a half teaspoons of prepared mustard and three tablespoons of mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is always that thing where it depends on how much you like and, and what you like, so I end up usually using a little bit more just because I I am a mayonnaise fan. To that, go ahead and add an eighth a teaspoon of salt and an eighth a teaspoon of pepper. I am going bare bones today because I didn't have a lot of additional stuff. You can also add one tablespoon of minced green onion if you have it and a eighth a teaspoon of lemon juice. And then go ahead and slice up or dice up some tomato and slice up your bread and assemble the sandwich. And this is such a great lunch on a hot day. This is one of those tried and true, has stood the test of time recipes that is still as good today as it was then. And there is no shame in eating it. It's not like, oh my goodness, this is a ration recipe. This is absolutely delicious. So just a reminder that egg salad is very inexpensive and amazing and the 40s had it right. I want to thank you all so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you like getting some more wartime ration recipes, some interesting blasts from the past. If you have your own recipes from that time, as always, make sure to comment below because the comment section is so full of amazing recipes from you guys, different ideas, ways to save money, ways to be frugal. And I am just so thankful for all of you. I'm so thankful that you're here today and every day. I appreciate you all so much. Make sure to give this video a like, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and join this amazing community i will see you all very soon if you want to see some more wartime recipes i have them for you right here go ahead and click on this video and give it a watch I've been